school we open school one school so the kids in the community can come even though they don't have any money we receive them as free just to educate them if they are really educated from them we are going to have some you know professional people for the future of the Haiti for the future of the church most of the time they bring their parents and if they were part of the Vodou people they converted to the Christianity this is school in Haiti is the way we preach the gospel but when you receive those kids they don't have money their parents don't have money that mean you will not be able to charge him tuition so you need to figure out where you are going to have money to pay teachers comme mon gars à l'école là connia yeah we have about 40 children here in this school and we have uh first second third and fourth grade uh because because of of the way the facilities are we have one class here and one class here oh, no we have two classes here and two classes here but uh in the uh, on our construction site now we will have better classrooms and many many children in the area are not schooled and we our our goal is to pull them in and provide them with an education we strongly believe in education the more educated the child is the more useful he's going to be to himself his family his friends and his community all together and, and and if we do not educate these children later on they become social problems but if they are educated properly then they'll become assets to the world so we want to continue investing in education and we do the very best we can to continue providing good Christian education in every single place the church the evangelical lutheran church has a congregation we are right now at uh, peredo and uh, the name of the school is uh, lutheran church of orno at the same place also we have a a church on sunday we come to worship and during the week kids are coming to school in this small place we have uh, a church with uh, about 80 members one school with uh, 150 kids in just small place even some of them they stay we don't have place for them even to sit when they come at the school this population we have so many people who are they are vodou people from this place we have many many vodou priests living in this area so our goal one day so we can go to them preach them the gospel and the holy spirit will convince their heart and they come they may come to christ when you see those kids at the beginning, you may say they look weak, you know, they are afraid to talk, they shy. But maybe after two or three years, you know, so they don't shy anymore. They begin to learn so many things. And you can see, you can say, if we did it have possibility to help those kids to come to school. It should be just a crime. The material needs in Haiti are vast and ongoing, but most critical to the church are the spiritual needs. It's been said that Haiti is 80% Catholic and 100% voodoo. While that's clearly an exaggeration, conservative estimates indicate that more than half of the population practice the voodoo religion. Haitian voodoo originated in Western Africa and arrived in Haiti with the African slave trade during Haiti's colonial period. Catholic masters forbade the open practice of voodoo and that pressure resulted in the integration of a variety of Roman Catholic liturgical elements into traditional voodoo worship. This allowed voodoo practitioners to continue their religion 
under an outward Catholic guise. The Roman Catholic cult of saints was easily incorporated into the voodoo religion, which venerates ancestral spirits and seeks their help in every aspect of daily life. I'm in the village of Decay. And in the village of Decay, before I came to be a Christian, I didn't have a family that was Christian. I didn't have a family that was a Christian. My parents were a Christian. They were a Christian. They were a Christian. They were a Christian. But at the age of 15, I was 15 years old. I was a Christian and I was a Christian. Et puis, pendant que j'ai venu à l'église, je suis baptisé, je commence à grandir dans l'église. Et puis, c'est comme ça que j'ai fait appel à moi-même. Et puis, j'ai fait appel à moi-même, je suis venu jouer un pasteur Israël, et puis, nous commençons à travailler ensemble. Parce que la zone ça est une zone vaudouisante, mais qui était très, très difficile. Mais avec un pile patience, nous étions, nous prêchions l'évangile là, nous prêchions, nous prêchions, jusqu'à ce que nous venions de quelques grands mondes qui commençaient à venir. Ils ont commencé à venir, ils ont commencé à venir, ça a été dans l'année 98. Et jusqu'ici, c'est que nous avons eu avec eux pour arriver à connaître mon Dieu. Ils ont plus connu vos doigts que vous connaissez mon Dieu. Ils ont plus aimé adorer Satan que vous adorer mon Dieu. Mais il y a des gens qui ont fait l'église, qui ont conseillé, quittez l'église là, non. L'église n'a pas fait ceci pour vous, l'église n'a pas fait l'autre bon pour vous-même. Mais venez jouer nous bon ici, plutôt la plus bon pour nous-mêmes. Et chaque là, c'est le plus gros, plus gros défi que nous avons. Parce qu'il y a toujours affaibli la foi à mon Dieu pour faire vous décourager. La Christianité, comme nous avons la Church Baptiste, la Catholique, et nous pouvons dire que nous avons formé des churches. But at the same time also, we have also the Vodou people. In the past, the Vodou was not considered as a religious body. But right now, they try to raise it up as a religious body, to have the legal entity to marry people and to baptize kids and so on. Right now, they said, we have the largest religious in Haiti, or church bodies, is Catholic Church. Most of the people who are belong to the Catholic Church, most of them also belong to the Vodou people. They mix things. When we are praying the true God, the Vodou priest will... The Vodou priest is not able to worship at the same time with us. Because the bad spirit need to wait until we finish and we go for them to come. So after maybe three months or one year, the Vodou priests need to leave this place and to move to another place if they want to continue to worship the bad spirit. But our goal as the Lutheran in Haiti we want to plant a church everywhere they have a Vodou temple. So we will, we will not leave any space for them to worship the bad spirit. This is our goal. Because of the close connection between Catholicism and Voodoo in Haiti, many Christians resist church practices and doctrine that seem on the surface to be Roman Catholic. It's a constant challenge to retain Lutheran identity and Lutheran distinctives like the historic liturgy, the use of vestments, the practice of confession and absolution, the practice of infant baptism, and the belief in the real presence of Christ in the Lord's Supper. In Haiti, everything looked like Catholic. For many people, he's un Christian. So he's kind of fighting as Lutheran because we have so many things look like Catholic. People said, no, it is not good. That we have to take time to explain them. They are biblical. So it is important that we have pastors who are well trained so that they may go and start working as well trained pastor. We need to be careful because we do not want to send any kind of person to go and start working, but we have to make sure that that person being sent to a place, a specific place to work, have been well trained in the Lutheran doctrine. And especially in Haiti, when you said you are a Lutheran church, 
to practice what we believe as Lutheran, you need to be able to defend what we teach, what we believe in front of all other pastors, in front of all other people without a high background, we will not be able to do it. In light of the challenges of retaining Lutheran identity in Haiti, the leadership of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Haiti have made theological education of pastors a top priority. In 2008, their fledgling seminary, Concordia Theological Seminary Haiti, was recognized by the Haitian government. This status gives the seminary the right to grant the accredited degree of Bachelor of Theology to men who undergo a rigorous theological program leading to ordination. At the beginning, uh, for our seminary, we, we, we tried to have only one location. We began at Port-au-Prince. But as we don't have enough human resources in one place, because most of our professors are pastors at the same time, and district president also. What we are doing right now, we try to have a seminary without walls. So we have one place here, we are teaching here at Capetian. Here we have 12 students that we, every Saturday, we are teaching them in the Lutheran doctrine. And in Lekai, we have many students there, uh, in Jackmel as well, in Port-au-Prince. So actually we have those four places where we have many students who from time to time we have to go to teach them. So we need to travel, to drive sometime, to go from Cape Asian to Port-au-Prince, from Port-au-Prince to Jackmel or to Lekai. So means of transportation is for us actually one of the main challenge. So if we have 20 students in Jackmel, 20 in the North Cape Haitian, maybe 25 on the south, and so on. Instead of asking 30 students to come to Port-au-Prince to train them, we send a pastor to their place to teach the course. So professors are moving to location and locations to train students. That costs less money, and the student will continue to do what they have been doing. We don't take them away from their family. You know, it's really good. But also the students, we do not have enough books available. And books we have now, most of them are in English. And not all our students know enough English. So that's one of the challenges. We would like to have um, books in French. We want to remain as a confessional church body in Haiti and try to maintain in our church confession and absolution. In the Lord's Supper also, people need to know that they come to receive the body of Christ and his blood. We also continue to baptize babies because it is only way we can also bring them to the kingdom of Christ. And also even the, the, the adult in Haiti, when they receive Christ, we baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And for our kids also, we have a class of confirmation for them. So we go all of them to the small catechism of the Martin Luther. So without this base, you know, they can lose faith. As you know that the Bible said, many of, of us will die because we don't know the truth. Is the reason why in each hour 
churches, we don't need to have a lay pastor. We need to have a pastor. And right now in the Lutheran Church of Haiti, Evangelical Lutheran Church of Haiti, we have only 16 pastors. And we have 105 congregations. So you can see our needs right now for all those congregations and for those congregations we are going to have in the future to have a pastor to take care of. You know, all of us cannot go to France, Jamaica, or to Haiti. But from what they have, they can go even further than that. But we are waiting for them. Because as brothers in Christ, we want them to come and bound us together to do this work and uh, bring more people to the kingdom of Christ. In this short film, you've had a glimpse into the nature of life in Haiti. The devastation, the poverty, the lack of medical care, the crisis of Haiti's youth and their need for education. You've also seen how the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Haiti, a confessional church body in fellowship with the LCMS, is helping to address these issues within their context. Like the Good Samaritan of Luke chapter 10, they are aiding the sick and injured, feeding the hungry, helping those in need to become economically self-sufficient, and caring for orphans. But more than anything, they are bringing the all-sufficiency of Jesus Christ, our Good Samaritan, to the people around them. These people are our brothers and sisters in Christ. We hope that you will join us and be a part of their story.